Hey guys, it's Avengers Week here at Fat Ninja Studios as we prepare to see the conclusion to the Thanos saga this weekend with Endgame. I'm your host, Steve, and with me is... Raging Antibody. Here's our list of top 12 prediction for what's going to happen in Endgame. Number 12. I think that Doctor Strange actually didn't see the future. He physically traveled there like he did with Dormammu and created a time loop to live, die, repeat the scenario 14 million plus times. I think that the one scenario who chose is a gamble at Thanos' mercy. What I mean by that is, when they tried to keep the stone from him, so he would vengefully destroy them all. But Doctor Strange realized there was also compassion behind the monster and took a chance that they would live to fight another day. Number 11. The rumors have been swirling that the trailers are either completely doctored or that they only show the first 20 minutes of the film itself, which has been revealed to be over three hours long. With that being said, the latest trailer has kind of a desperate argument between the remaining Avengers and Captain Marvel herself. Stone, so, so let's get him. Who is all gung-ho like. Let's go kick his ass. If it's true that the trailers are only showing the first 20 minutes or so, then I have a feeling we will see a half-repeat of the Hulk versus Thanos fight from Infinity War, where Captain Marvel and maybe even Thor together will double-team him, and he will still manage to overpower them. After watching Captain Marvel, a big theme in the film is how she doesn't work well as a team, which I think will play out when they face Thanos. That they will actually get in each other's way, and that's when, possibly, we see our first character death, albeit probably a supporting one. Number 10. I also think that we will see the Beyonders, or reference to them, and Kang the Conqueror in the Quantum Realm. After seeing that weird shimmering city in the background during Ant-Man and the Wasp as Hank and Janet leave the Quantum Realm, it made me question of how she survived so long and who else she encountered while there. She seems to know a lot about the time manipulation too, so if that city is really Kronos, that opens up a huge amount of possibilities. Number 9. In the newest trailer clip that Marvel put out, Black Widow says he used the stones again? Key word in here is again. What does that mean? Has he already wiped out half of the universe? Does she mean he used them to travel to Titan and bring it back to its former glory? To heal himself? How do they even know? Well, my theory is that both of these things, and possibly bringing back Gamora or his children from their deaths. In the case of Gamora, he might make her more docile, altering her mind. In the case of his other children, maybe he needed to make more farm hands. I'm curious about this now, and I can't wait to find out. Number 8. I also want to say that, while there are so many hints and leaks at time travel that it is almost confirmed to be happening, I don't think it will go as the majority of the viewers expect. Usually, one travels back in time, a few changes are made, and the future is different and boom goes the dynamite. However, this is the MCU. It's Marvel, and we already have confirmation in previous films that the multiverse exists, a la the Ancient One in the Thor films. What I think is going to happen is that everything that happened up to the end of Infinity War and parts of Endgame will have happened and be permanent. However, the moment that they travel back in time will create two different realities. In this new reality, character origins and such can be played with and gives Marvel much more freedom going forward, kind of like when they merged the Ultimate Universe with the 616 in the comics, while still keeping the previous films relevant. Could we possibly see multiple versions of the same characters on screen meeting themselves? Number 7. This may seem like a cop-out, but I've been pondering it profusely and one of my predictions for Avengers Endgame is that everyone's theories regarding Endgame will be incorrect. I say this not because I don't believe that there aren't a lot of well-conceived theories out there. It's because Marvel Studios, along with the Rooster Brothers, have been masters of misdirection. Even the top billed actors themselves didn't see all of the scripts. And all the trailers and set leaks were formed quite intentionally to give us just enough of the wrong idea. Number 6. I also think that Carol Danvers going forward won't necessarily be joining the Avengers straight away. I think that Black Panther will take over while Captain Marvel her herself will form S.W.O.R.D. and perhaps even help in the formation of the Infinity Watch. 
I also don't think Thanos will be killed, defeated, sure, but imprisoned somehow, or perhaps a change of heart if the Nebula story happens. He is way too compelling of a character to be offed so soon, then again, who knows what's in store for Phase 4. Number 5 As funny as it is, the theory that all it would take is Ant-Man crawling up Thanos' rectum and expanding, resulting in the death of Thanos himself, is ill-conceived at best. Part of me wants Scott Lang to attempt it, just so audiences could witness what would actually happen. Thanos' durability is unprecedented, even without being assisted by the Infinity Stones. He took a punch from Hulk without a bruise. That's the same Hulk who tore through Chitauri spaceships like a papier-mâché piñata. Grenades, laser fire, space debris hurtling into him literally had no effect on Thanos. He tore off Tony's suit like it was a tin can and plucked a Mind Stone out of Vision's forehead like candy. The Stormbreaker, the single most powerful weapon of any of the current Avengers had, thrown with Thor's godlike strength, barely cut deep enough to harm Thanos. My point is, if Ant-Man actually expanded inside Thanos' ass, Ant-Man is dead, crushed by the walls of Thanos' colon. And at best, Thanos has a moment of extreme discomfort. Number 4 I'm predicting that if anyone dies in the film, it will be Captain America. Of course, it boils down to both Tony and Cap since the actors playing them are moving on, at least for now. But hear me out. We have the hints at time travel, we have the voiceover of Peggy Carter, we have the old watch and him feeling out of time and place already. While Iron Man sacrificing himself would be a way to make up for some of his overzealousness, I think Cap's defining trait is the true sacrificial play. After all, faced with aliens and gods, he still has his Christian faith and believes there is an afterlife where he may get to see Peggy again. He had that vision during Age of Ultron, where he did get to go to that dance. If I'm wrong on this, then my second guess is that he will remain in the past, but I think he's going to wield the gauntlet and give up his life to restore the universe as his final act. Number 3 We're almost 100% sure we'll see the Celestials rise to power in the next phase of the MCU. Since their introduction, they have been these long-lost adversaries, once prominent wielders of the Infinity Stones themselves, but it's never really been said that they were wiped out. Who's to say that they didn't influence Thanos in some way to go after the stones himself and wipe out half of the universe? Maybe they acted as the voice in the darkness and that's how he got the Mind Stone in the first place. However, when it comes to universe ending threats, these guys are the next step up. And when it comes to the Celestials in the MCU, they have added characters not usually among the ranks, such as Ego. So it wouldn't even be a stretch if we found out that Galactus was part of them as well. Number 2 I think one of the end credits scenes will feature Stanley in a prominent role as a Watcher or something even more cosmic and higher up in the hierarchy. Most definitely the film will be dedicated to him, that much everyone is sure of, but I just have this feeling that whoever does end up sacrificing themselves to use the gauntlet to try and restore the universe will meet Stan Lee. How epic would it be if he was the one above all? Yes, most people do acknowledge that it's Jack Kirby from the comic books, but I just think it will be a beautiful farewell to a man who helped bring such great joy to millions of people these last decades. Number 1 During the end credits of Infinity War, we got our first glimpse of the pager that Fury uses to contact Captain Marvel, which later got a more detailed explanation in the actual Captain Marvel film, as Danvers explains that she upgraded it for him to use when he absolutely needs to reach her. Given that information, in one of the teaser trailers for Endgame, we see that the remaining Avengers have recovered the pager and have been periodically trying to resend the signal when Captain Marvel suddenly shows up. However, a question lingers here. Fury disappeared in the snap just as he sent the message. In the middle of traffic, how did the Avengers recover the pager? Who knew Fury's whereabouts? Mariah Hill was decimated right alongside of him. Now, the newest season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. hasn't aired yet, and so we don't know how the snap affected them currently. But what if Agent Coulson was able to recover the pager looking for his former boss and friend at his last known location, and deliver it to the Avengers? 
Given that how Endgame will be wrapping up a 10 year story and focusing primarily on the original characters, it would be interesting to see him pop up and exchange a few words with Pepper Potts about Tony being missing, or perhaps there to greet him when he returns to Earth. What do you think? Could Coulson make a small cameo in Endgame? I hope so. Bonus round. We decided to include a bonus round in our list, just this once. This one can go either way. So in the very first Endgame trailer, we see Tony Stark recording a message to Pepper Potts via a helmet, and the theories of whether or not he makes it back to Earth have pretty much been solved by the release of subsequent tra trailers. With that said, in one of the newer trailers, we see the remaining Avengers board the Milano and take to space to track down and fight Thanos for a little revenge. Now. We compared the damaged helmet to the one from Infinity War, and the one from the trailer does not look like the nanotech suit, but rather one of the older armors. Our prediction is that then, perhaps when the team goes to avenge the Fallen, they are defeated once again and all that remains is Tony Stark, adrift in space, before he initializes the time travel plan to reset the timeline. There isn't much proof for this, after all. We know how Marvel loves to doctor the footage that they do release, so nothing can be 100% confirmed, but we here at Fat Ninja think that it could be one of those out of left field type unexpected moments that the Russo brothers have so adamantly hinted at. Well, what did you think of our list? Are there any you agree with or are they all rubbish? Post your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to help us out if you liked the video. More content will be coming soon, so keep an eye out. This has been Raging Antibody and... Steve. Excelsior.